Hey everybody, this is Drew with the Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the pluses and the minuses of buying old coins or buying uh, modern coins. We all have things that we like to collect. And in this video, I'm gonna give you guys just the discrepancies that I see in both. We've got a few good coins to show you. They're all gonna be on our website, akushacollectibles.com. But let's get this video started. Now, the reason why that we're creating this video is because a lot of people tell you to collect a certain thing. A lot of people say, hey, you should be stacking bullion, hey, you should be collecting coins. All this is super important for your numismatic journey um, and your investment journey. A lot of that, yes, is important, but they never really tell you why. They never really say, um, you know, why coins they feel is better or why bullion they feel is better. Or, or why new age coins in this case versus old coins would be why you should stack them. And the main reason why um, I like to talk about this stuff is because I collect what I love to collect. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense in terms in, of investments. But since I'm in coin collecting and coin dealing, a lot of the coins that I do collect, if one day I, I wanna get rid of them or um, I have something else that I need to, uh, to buy, I could end up selling them for a profit. So um, let's talk a little bit about uh, modern coins. I'm going to show you guys a few of them here. Got a little 1997 uh, Silver Eagle. This one's graded MS69 by NGC. Nice little coin right here. And that older type coin. So we got a Morgan Dollar, 1904 Morgan Dollar, a little bit of like a proof like feel to the coin. And, uh, you know, we're just really flashy, nice. Uh, 100. 20 year old coin almost and so um, let's give you guys some benefits and some negatives on both sides of the coin here because um, you know someone's going to tell you to get jump into old coinage but there's going to be some things that hold you back and some people are going to tell you to jump into modern coinage and then you're going to be like why did I get in this uh, to begin with so let's give you guys just a little bit um, of you know pros and cons of both and I wanted to thank you guys also for just the support in the past few videos it's been very uh, awesome and humbling to read your comments and uh, you know just see everything that's been going on with the channel make sure to like this video if you want uh, more videos it would mean a lot <laughs> So I wanted to start off by saying that we bought a few coins from Fernando this week. We also bought a few coins from Tylon this week, or Tyler. Um, we'll have Tyler's link down below if you guys want to subscribe to him. He makes a few videos here and there, and we can be more grateful for those guys. If you want to sell coins to us, reach out on our website or text us 832-538-4122. Um, but a few benefits of modern coinage, um, it's just easy uh, financial entry to be able to get into the space, right? So. A lot of these uh, American Silver Eagles, a lot of these Proof Kennedys, a lot of these Business Strike Kennedys, all are pretty easy to buy and get into. I think most of the, uh, the ASCs that I bought are around $45, $50 range. And uh, it really is great when you're filling out a set and you don't want to spend too much money. Um, the, another positive about them is it's an attractive and it's a new look. Um, you know, a lot of the coins that you might find that are old most of them have been cleaned, most of them have been hurt in some way, scratched, rim ding, things like that. And if you're wanting to buy something that looks great in a great condition, modern coins is something that maybe you should consider um, just because that's where you feel like you should collect. Um, and also, which, which is nice about uh, modern coins, just like about uh, older coins as well, is that you can have a long collection of dates. So, you know, American Silver Eagles, they're all the way back in the 80s when they started and they're still continuing uh, a little bit today. So just a lot of room for you to be able to build up over time. The thing about a lot of collectors is that they want that um, they want that span of time where they're going to be able to chase something, continue to get it, continue to upgrade um, certain coins. So, you know, coins that are MS65, they can upgrade to MS68. Um, they can chase the key dates. A lot of that stuff is something that someone likes to uh, attach themselves to over time just like the older coins as well and another cool thing is that it allows us to kind of relate with young numismatists a lot of young numismatists like 
old coins, but a lot of them starting to like new coins just because it's the era that they were raised, the era that they were born. And uh, so that's kind of the benefits for me in terms of modern coinage. Uh, there's just a lot of things that give it that appeal, give it that interest. And uh, I personally, just telling you now, I don't collect them. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit tough for me. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of the downsides of modern coins and the reasons why I don't really touch them too often unless I get them for a great price. But let's talk about those downsides. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts about, you know, old coins versus modern coins. What do you like to collect? What do you like to uh, spend your time and money on? And uh, subscribe if you're new. We got new videos coming out every week, trying to be informative, but also trying to have a little fun also. But yeah, let's get back to today's video. So the downsides of modern coins, let's start off with something that's a little bit more basic. They were, they were really like mass produced. And uh, a lot of these American Silver Eagles that are just business strikes, they made many, many millions of them. And the thing about them is that there's not very many discrepancies in terms of grade. You're gonna see a lot of ones that are, the lowest you'll find are MS-64 to MS-69, MS-70. And so, when they're mass produced and there's not much variation between coins, it can get a little bit lackluster. It can get a little bit uninteresting for me. Um, and so for me, sometimes it's just harder to move those coins just because they're so readily available, so easy to purchase. And also it's just, there's not very many discrepancies amongst the coins. You can't really get too many coins that stand out in the series. Um, they're all gonna look blast white and they're all gonna look nice. Um, and if you don't get those, you're going to find ones with milk spots and things that you just don't like. So um, a big downside for me is that there's just so many out there and they're so readily available from many other dealers that me getting them, me selling them is just sometimes not the best thing to do. Um, and sometimes also to consider if you're a coin dealer is that the, the, the immediate return for these coins are not significant. So we talked about the financial entry. Um, when buying these coins getting into the series and it's easy for you to get in the series, right? But say if I'm buying a coin and I'm trying to get it close to gray sheet or get it 10% under comps Well 10% under comps is like four dollars. You know what I mean? Like it's not going to be very much for you. So um, Sometimes it's a lot of brunt work. It's a lot of things that you have to Get yourself tied up in so like say if I buy a hundred silver eagles and I'm making four dollars every silver eagle that I get Yes, they'll sell, but sometimes it just takes so much labor and intensity that you just want to work with older coinage. So that's kind of a, a bigger downside for me in terms of a coin dealing perspective. And uh, another thing to consider also is that sometimes there's a big lack of, just a lack of desirability among bigger collectors. Um, so a lot of the collectors that I see now are people that collect cap bus, people that collect drape bus, people that collect Morgan dollars that are high grade. People that collect even Roosevelt dimes that are high grade or Franklin's that are high grade. Everything um, that I see in terms of collectors and what they're willing to spend and what they're willing to uh, chase hasn't really been reflected on modern coins. And uh, a lot of this has to do with just the aging of the series. So once, you know, American Silver Eagles age, once these new age kind of commemorative age, yes, there'll be some desirability. Yes, people will be starting to get those into their collections, but right now it's just something that most people are counting themselves out on. And the way that you know that is that people, you know, they won't, you know, like I said, it's easy financial entry, right? And so the easy financial entry means that there's not much demand for the supply that there is. And so that the reason why people are spending $10,000, $5,000 on coins is because that might be the only one in that grade, or that might be um, close to, you know, close to the top in terms of uh, its grade, its eye appeal, uh, the rest. Um, and, and like I was talking about earlier with condition and everything else, <clears throat> there's hard to get coins that stand out. So, you know, I buy a Morgan dollar because it's toned, or I buy a Morgan dollar because it's flashy. Um, I, I buy um, a cap bus because it's original, it would, it would cack. A lot of those things really are, are things that really hone in collectors, get them excited, but you can't send this coin to CAC. Um, you can't send stuff like this um, 
and find them that are nice and like flashy or proof like unless you want to spend a lot of money and you really can't find them toned too often and when they are toned sometimes they're just unattractive and so all of that being said those are kind of my downsides for american silver eagles and the newer age kind of coinage and uh yeah so a few things that i'm beating them up on but a few things that really are going to be um you know kind of be mantras for that coins had in the past but also are going to be coins that you know start to age and do well in the future but let's talk a little bit about old coins why i like them why they're helping our business and uh, give you guys our perspective on why I collect them. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you guys a few modern coins just after the points that we discussed, give you guys a little bit um, about just everything that you know we were talking about here. So you know, you're, looking, you're looking at these coins, old, you know, not old, but new, and uh, you know, nice, modern, attractive looking coins, just something that's interesting. And let's, let's take a look, $80 on the back of the coin, that's about what we sell it for, and that's something that's, you know, a better date, American Silver Eagle, MS-69, the barrier to entry is very low, you know, you can get into this really easily um, and start acquiring a set like this one down here. Uh, taking a look at just some cheaper coins as well, I mean, a lot of these are going to be 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Um, you know, it's just something for you guys to understand that when you get into this space, it's a little bit cheaper. The coins are going to look a lot similar. There's not a lot of variation between each coin. And, uh, you know, a lot of the points that we discussed, you're going to be seeing just as I span over the coins here. And uh, we hope you take this to, to heart and understanding. We're going to have all these coins up on our website, AkushaCollectibles.com, if you guys are interested. And, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about old coins. But we're going to also be showing you guys some old coins at the end when we talk about those points. So... Stay tuned for that, and let's talk about some old coins. So for U.S. coins um, that are older, a few kind of things that I like about them is that they're kind of easier to move. So um, if you know what you're looking for, if you know what to buy, if you know who to sell them to, you're always going to have um, you know, things to move, things to work on, things to sell. I think we worked on a few coins yesterday, and I think we had like 14 or 15 packages. Just because we know what to buy, we know who to sell them to, and uh, thank you guys for supporting us, by the way. The thing about returns on these coins also is that they could also amount to 10 to 15%. But that 10 to 15% might amount to $30, might amount to $100, might amount to $1,500. So when you're starting to build a coin business as a coin dealer, you're going to need that 10 to 15% to be a large, you know, a large amount in terms of its uh, percentage in the coin, right? So like just for example, we sold a coin, um, we sold a coin recently, made $150 on that coin. And for me, that's a little bit easier, right? So say you have like 10 American Silver Eagles, you sell them all, you make 40 bucks. Right? And you might sell them to six different people. You have to package it up six different times and ship them all out. That's great. But say you sell one coin, make $100. Make that $100, put it in the package, send it off, and go look for more coins. So the benefit sometimes is that you're going to make a lot more money on old U.S. coins just because they're more desired. And also there's just more money to be made on them. Uh, it's a little bit more of a tougher financial entry. We're going to be talking about that uh, downside very soon. Um, and like I said, it was just more desirable with, amongst collectors because, you know, a lot of these kids, they grew up with this stuff. They were at the baseball, uh, you know, the, the baseball field. They found a Mercury dime. Uh, they were fishing. They found a Morgan dollar. A lot of things like that really strike a core with people. They've been going to coin shows for how many years with their dad? And they love Morgan Dollars, or they love Peace Dollars, or they love Cat Bus. So all these things really resonate with collectors, give them that inside, you know, inside feel for them. And so a lot of the old coins, which you're going to have to understand when you're starting a coin business, a lot of old coins are going to carry your business in a lot of ways if you don't um, make it all bullion intensive. So what I mean by that is that we have coin dealers that really sell a few coins and sell a lot of bullion to, to people. I call them kind of bullion heads or bullion sharks. But if you're a coin dealer and you like to sell coins and you're not really into that bullion game, you don't have the capital for it, 
old coins really are going to be where you need to be. I mean, um, like I said, you're putting, if you can make $100 on a coin, but you do that 10 times a day, that's somewhere where you're going to want to be because, you know, $1,000 a day, 30 days is $30,000. And that's where a lot of people do well, and that's where you can build yourself up on. And so collecting old coins and uh, having old coins for sale is really going to be your financial future. And that's a really, it's a plus, but that could also be a downside, right? So um, I went into a coin shop, multi-million dollar coin shop. A lot of people working, everything. And they said, you gotta, you gotta buy from me, you gotta work with me. I came out and they brought out like 50 coins. And I was like, okay, well I'm done with this box, what else you got? He's like, oh that's it, yeah that's all we have. And I'm like, how do you guys run a coin shop with only 50 coins right now? And so understanding that old coins have to carry your business, have to help you progress it, can also be a downside too. Because when you're starting to scale and there's such a demand for coins, um, you're gonna have to be buying like crazy. And so that's just something that I would consider as a downside, but let's move into downsides of old type coins. So a few downsides, a few tough things to understand about uh, old coins and something that takes time um, for you to be able to start coin dealing, even coin collecting. Um, I think that a lot of these will uh, you know, open your eyes, give you some perspective. But uh, it's a little bit of a tougher barrier to entry in terms of knowledge, right? And so I've been coin collecting, coin dealing for two years, and um, I've been beaten up a lot along the way. We bought a coin like like for like eighteen hundred bucks, and uh, it was cleaned, and I didn't know that, and now we're gonna lose six seven hundred dollars on it. So, understanding that you have to have that knowledge, have to have that wherewithal to be able to work with coins, also find collectors that want them. A lot of this you're gonna need knowledge, you're gonna need perspective from many other people, and so a lot of this can be obtained. It just takes probably five, six, seven years, sometimes ten to really get a full grasp, full scope of your client list, of the coins that you wanna sell, of originality of coins, of great eye appeal coins, um, great cat coins. All these things really are gonna to have to come to fruition for you to be successful long-term in my opinion. And you're also gonna to have to move a little bit with the times, you know, create a website, do a lot of things that, you know, reach collectors online because a lot of them still are working and buying offline. Um, another thing that's tough about the, the old type series is that it's a little bit more of an expensive endeavor. So say if you're collecting Morgan dollars, you know, they started off in 79 and they all, they went all the way until, you know, 1921. And so when you're starting a series and you're moving into it and you're wanting to buy high grade uh, examples, a lot of those coins are going to be, uh, you know, an MS 67 are going to be $800 all the way up to, you know, a few million dollars if they're key dates. And so before you should move into collecting um, Morgan dollars, just understand that sometimes it's going to be an expensive, hard, long road that might take you 30 years, 40 years, uh, may take you just 10 years. But a lot of it sometimes is just a waiting game, waiting for the right coin that you love, um, waiting for a coin that really is going to be an impact on the market. I know a lot of guys that say, I want to fill out my Morgan series and I want to fill out my Peace Dollar series, but they're buying coins they just wouldn't love. And what I would say is that you just have to wait. You just have to give it time. You just have to stay hungry. And uh, so sometimes that waiting game is, is a little bit tough as well for a downside of old coins because, you know, some out there, there's some series that have completely uh, clean coins, have trouble uh, finding one original coin. And so sometimes it might take you a year, two years to find that coin. And that's something that people would see as a downside because a lot of the things that we want in life right now are so immediate and coins that are nice, that are beautiful, that's something that you say you can't live without might take a long time. Um, and uh, another thing that we touched on a little bit earlier is that there's a lot of trap coins when you move into um, old, old coins. So when you walk through a coin show and you're trying to find someone honest, sometimes um, people's perspectives and understandings of the market and what they value and think is cleaned and what you think is clean and what PCGS and NGC think is cleaned is all different. And so 
sometimes you're going to be taking a loss because a collect, uh, you know, a dealer says, no, that's not clean. I'll send it to PCI or I'll send it to ANX or ICG and they won't make it cleaned. And, and then you end up buying that coin raw and sending it to PCGS and they say it's cleaned or they say it's counterfeit or um, just a whole slew of problems that can happen. And it's going to be inevitable for you. You're going to have to take losses up front. You're going to have to feel the brunt of someone else's opinion of a certain coin. And so what I would say to that is sometimes find someone that is super honest, super hard on their coins, and ultimately that'll help you in the long run because you won't lose as much and you'll find coins that you really like. And uh, once again, we're talking about running your coin business. You're gonna have to find old US coins that people really like, and that's gonna carry your business. But say sometimes the market's so hot that you can't, you can't find the coins. And uh, so carrying those coins in your coin shop, making it all about coins and that product sometimes can be a little bit of a downfall, especially when there's a, a, a heart, you know, a market that's really wanting to buy coins, wanting to get into them. Um, that's going to be a little bit tougher for you, um, especially right now because everything's just been going crazy. And so thank you guys for listening to this part of the video. Let's show you guys a few coins. All right, guys, wrapping up today's video a little bit. Um, you know, I wanted to show you guys this, uh, you know, you got some something that's unique, something that's standout-ish. You're not going to find that sometimes on the modern coins. Nice little tone, 21. Um, you know, a lot of different variety here, a lot of different things that are interesting. We got a, a Franklin, which is a little bit more of a new age coin, but still has that nice, uh, uh, you know, nice little growth in terms of what's happening in, this, in the market. Uh, we got a we get a, a, a V nickel from 1904 with a little color on it. A little variation really does make it interesting for some collectors. Uh, we talked about the 1904 earlier, but a little bit of a flashier coin. Didn't proof like, but super nice also. Um, you know, if you wanted to take a look down here, we got a nice large scent. A little bit of kind of, uh, you know, nice chocolate browns. A little mercury dime here. And then we have another 21 that looks kind of interesting. Might have been held in something. Um, you know, some cardboard or something like that, but still nice original luster. And if we're talking about barrier to entry on stuff, this is only MS64 grade, and this coin's around $400 in value. And so um, you're going to see that variety. You're going to see a lot of the points that we discussed, but you're also going to see sometimes it's an expensive coin to get into. I think uh, this coin right here is around a $550 coin, and it's just an MS64 grade. And like we were talking about earlier, you have a Min State 69 Eagle over here that's selling for about 50 to 80 bucks. And so when you're moving into Morgan dollars, you know, MS64 in a semi key date grade is around 550 bucks. And so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video as we talk a little bit about these coins. But like I said earlier, you guys want to see more uh, pictures and uh, prices on these coins at kushacollectibles.com. We'd be happy to show you. So if we're talking about synopsis and a conclusion of today's video, we're going to be talking about, um, like I said, there's differences and there's similarities um, when you're talking about old coins versus modern coins. All have their desirability, all have their different types of interests, different types of quality. Um, it's gonna, it's, it's a very interesting marketplace and in how everything evolves over time. And so um, just understand that we're all in different places, we're all uh, at different collecting uh, spots in our life and uh, nothing is to be frowned upon. You like collecting modern, you like collecting old, all of it is what you like. And that's something that makes this hobby great. If you find something that you like and you wanna collect it, at the end of the day, you will win. And uh, that's what I've learned over time and that's what I've understood. And so, thank you guys so much um, for coming along with us, talking about different coins, showing off a few different coins. And uh, let's cut it to today's outro. Did you guys enjoy today's video today? Um, if you guys did, please leave a like. Your like to us would mean so much. It would help us reach more uh, young numismatists, but also older guys also that like to get on the YouTube platform. Uh, subscribe if you're new because we like to create videos every week, get you involved, um, also get your mind rolling in terms of coinage. And subscribe, um, you know, you need to subscribe. But comment, comment is important. If you guys want to comment, start responding to other people and what they have to say about modern versus old coins, you know, that, that would be cool too because people like a conversation, people love a dialogue, 
and that ultimately is what we want at the end of the day. But we will see you guys in the next video.